Hey everyone, I have here Vampire Truck Ambush designed by Mark Stanford for Ninjago's Rise of the Snakes Wave. It consists of 4 May figures, 452 pieces, and retailed for $49.99 back in the day. The Vampire Truck here likes to pride itself in taking the term Monster Truck literally by being this huge, long, snaky body and a set of wheels. Albeit, they're more set up like a buggy than it is a Monster Truck, but that gives it just fantastic suspension all around, and really just holds up to rough play. Or, well, not all that much. Unfortunately, those storage containers on the sides aren't really held in there in the first place. Will also be the only storage available on this Tiger vehicle. Zoom in here towards the front really cements just how much of the body is comprised of the head, helping give that ridiculous cartoony feel. I mean, come on, we're talking about a sentient trunk here. We haven't even had anything like this since. There's a nice, very subtle suggestion of a tongue using a simply clever part usage with the classic yellow flag. Designer even put in a thought to properly continue inside it interestingly enough uses a front bottom aircraft fuselage as a base, though it would have been nice to get it in bright yellowish green. This is just on a ratchet doy and a fairly weak one at that. It has to mainly rely sitting on the ground. And if this looks big enough to hold a minifigure, it actually can, though not officially. You kinda just have to slide it in there, but it does hold it in fairly well, even with the armor. You can still roll around too, but only on a smooth surface, just gotta watch out for that tongue there. However, having a loose ratchet also doubles as a play feature as you just need to lift the truck up to let it out. Up towards the cockpit is this fantastic recolor of the classic windshield in transparent purple, which also came in a rattlecopter. There's just something very pleasing about this rare recolor, and a shame it didn't go beyond these sets. There's also a sudden introduction of earth green, which fizzles out into these very scaly stickers on the top of the head. There's also just one lone seat for the driver here. While it might look big enough for a passenger or at least some more storage, it's just enough due to the specialized Fangpire helmet here. Got the standard steering wheel on it with it being the only thing to represent controls or anything a cockpit has. There's not even a proper seat, which frankly is a real shame. But hey, at least there's that rare recolor to make up for it. Though, it can easily be modified to add that seat in, something I would hope a legacy version would have if we were to get one. Anyways, the back of the truck houses the main play feature set, which is easily indicated by this little gear in the back. And when I say this tail swings, it really swings. It gives a nice, almost 360 degree of motion when you able to take the tail and bring it all the way towards the front. Which gives us a very menacing presence that's almost unavoidable. The technique for this tail is actually still used today in most modern dragons, but interestingly enough, it uses parts from 1976, which is a lot older than I expect, but really cool regardless. What I'm not a fan of, though, is the very jarring, very obvious random splash of color of this disproportionate concentration of blue pins in one area tear towards the back. I mean, look, I get it, kids need to have it that way, but it's almost as bad as Bionicle's axe on where the feet are exclusively using blue pins. Admittedly, it is covered by an aesthetic panel that blocks it from front view, but they could have easily, easily swapped at least half of them for black. I do quite enjoy this recolor of that panel, though. Even here, they should have used white bluish gray bushings instead of red. For the nitpicking though, as it can just be swapped of how common the parts are, and really shouldn't solely bring down the set. Got a nice suggestion of powered suspension there, and oh, I almost forgot, one of these storage containers should contain an extra punch. And, uh, no, uh, should be on the other side then. Ah, uh, there we go. Yeah, nice little stick of dynamite. Not sure if it really adds anything due to how much of a beast a truck by itself is, but it's nice to have it. Last thing I'd like to point out are these unprinted spinner crowns that act as the rims. Really wish we'd have gotten more recolors for how much they add while also being simple. I'm actually surprised that they didn't even bring them back when they did more snakes in 2015. And it's all that versus this, one of the legendary golden weapon vehicles. It's pretty small, about the size of my hand actually, but also not too big, avoid them being oversized like most modern LEGO bikes. This is meant to represent just your typical snowmobile sliced right down the middle, which is very appropriate for the ice theme and all around. And I guess just doesn't want to stay up all of a sudden. <laughs> Even got some stickers here to show the front is either iced over or currently going through some sort of snowy landscape. Excellent design work here with a nice splash of purple. I'd also like to point out that this build takes advantage of various pinches to give its very angular shape. Though it can be a bit fragile due to that. Feedback features another clever part usage with a technic rotation joint seen in most Titan mech scales today in black. A recolor that only came in one other scent which I believe was from the Superheroes line. 
It also spins really nicely given its only wheel as the front ski is just as hidden to plane. Nothing wrong with it though, but it does limit the surfaces it can go on. The IC Dynamic is continued with the newer specialized rock element in transparent medium blue that's also used here in the back as either a wheel cover or an extra seat that's surely more comfortable than the control setup. There's also a suggestion of an oddly backwards exhaust or some sort of intake, not exactly sure what that is. The entire thing rolls or I suppose glides exceptionally well, that is, only on a flat surface. You can kinda imagine it speeding on through the snow, making quick maneuvers and even showing off with a few tricks. Speed is your need and this will do that and more. Definitely a great little small addition to Ninjago's vehicle lineup. Many figures from left to right are Fink Pyre General Finktum and Fink Pyre Warrior Fink Dam. While they both use the same modified headpiece, Fangtum is actually exclusive to the sim. He wields his respective tribe's staff with the printed tile representing both the Fangpire symbol and the anti-venom. The white on red is definitely not as opaque as I wish were, even for 2012 standards. Moving on to the back, I want to point out a disparity I received with my copy of the sim. I had unfortunately received two Fangdam heads and none for Fangtum. You see, the scales on Fangtum's head are supposed to be white, unlike the black Fangtum has. I assumed a reason for this was a mix up of batches just due to how closely similar they are to one another. Anyways though, I love how the graphic design department integrated the mold into the back prints making it feel like the tail of the head transitions into the prints. We then have JZX and Zane ZX, pretty common to get these guys back in the day as it was the main suit for 2012. ZX as a whole though really had this nice design gimmick going on for them with each suit being personally tailored for each ninja. Zane here wields the Serpents of Inch, which is technically included in his set twice in the form of the cell reveal we saw earlier, but it is nice to get both forms in a set for added playability. Jay just gets a standard silver katana. Also awkwardly enough, the heads for these guys were actually swapped in the instructions, making the left Zane ZX and the right Jay ZX. The best part about these suits was the new armor piece that was introduced with them for this wave. Unlike the previous wave where it had the swords going to the hoods, this time it gives proper armor and not only holding one sword but two swords at the same time. For what was originally $50, feels well worth the price you pay. Not only do you get a conflict in a box, both vehicle builds feel substantial enough that they could be separated into sets on their own. This is the type of format that we rarely see nowadays outside of dual bike sets from LEGO which is unfortunate because of how packed the set is from a collector and consumer standpoint. In fact, just bulk up the snowmobile a little bit and this would easily be a $65 set today. Anyways, this has been Marty from Bio Ninja Bricks. thanks for watching and see you next time.